Hello, my name is James Bezik and I'm a developer advocate here at AWS Serverless. In this short series of videos, I'm going to show you how to build and deploy the web application in the Ask Around Me blog series. You can read the companion AWS Compute blog posts at the URL shown on the screen. In this video, I'll show you how to deploy the application to a live production URL using AWS Amplify. I'll also walk you through the changes you must make to Auth0 to enable authentication on a public site. Finally, I'll show you how you can make Amplify part of your deployment pipeline for future code releases. So in this video, we're going to look at deploying the front end from a local machine to a live production public URL using AWS Amplify Console. So first I'm going to go to the AWS Management Console, I've just logged in there, and then in the Services drop-down, look for Amplify. So you'll see under Deploy, just click on get it, Getting Started. You have a choice of different code repos you can use, GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, or Code Commit. I'm going to use GitHub for this demo today. So select that and hit continue. Now, first of all, we have to put the code we downloaded into a GitHub repo. So I'm going to go to my personal GitHub repo. And I'll just click on the add new directory option, new, new repository, and type in askaroundme-demo. This will be a private repo for AWS Amplify. I'm going to make this private, then create that repository. Okay, so take a note of the instructions that are provided to help add and create a new repository for existing code. I'll just move that off the screen. I'll get in it this repo. Then we'll just do uh, add all the files that are in this directory and then do our first commit, dash M first commit. Okay, so next all we have to do is then push that to our new repo. I'll just set the upstream to that GitHub repo we've just created. I'll copy that link. This then authenticates with GitHub. I'll just enter my credentials. And then it will push all of these new files into that repo. Okay, that's now been uploaded. I'm back over in GitHub now. If I just refresh the code window, you can see all of those files that reflect the directory from our VS Code IDE. So back in Amplify Console, I'll just maximize the screen. If you refresh the list of repos, it will detect we have this new Ask Rami demo repo. So I'm going to select that repo and the only branch that we have available and click on Next. Now this uses some generic build settings, but you can customize these for more complex deployments. You can change advanced settings too, but we won't be using those. I'll just use the vanilla conf configuration. And I'll just verify the settings we have here. You can see it's detected a view framework already, and I'll save and deploy. So this now starts the deployment process in Amplify Console. So once an app has been created, there are four steps to this. It starts provisioning the application and then going through a build, deployment, and verify. This takes a little bit of time, so I've just fast forwarded, and you can see that the application has now been deployed to this public URL. I'll just press F12 to show the mobile view. And you can switch to any type of mobile you like in the browser. I'm just going to use Pixel just an as an example. Now you'll notice when we log in, it, there's a problem. It doesn't let us log in straight away. So let's look at how we approach fixing that. So I log into my Auth0 backend where you'll see the different applications I've got set up. I'm going to click on Ask Around Me. Now the reason for this is the allowed list of URLs doesn't include this public URL we've just created. So we have to take that public URL. I'll just copy that to the clipboard and then paste that in. I can use a comma to allow multiple values. Paste those into all four of those fields there and then click on Save Changes. Now back over here, if I just reload the URL, I'll just allow locations there. If I then try to log in in the application, 
this now works because it's now an allowed URL. So I'm signing in with my Google account and you can now see the application is in a logged in state. Now, what if we want to make a change to the application? How do we push a new change out through Amplify? Well, let's take a look at that. If I want to change one part of the front end, I want to change the word logout up at the top here in the toolbar. I want to change that to sign out instead. So I'll go back to the code. And we'll just open the app.view component. You'll see that we've got login and logout. Those are the keywords that appear there. So I'll change this to sign out. I'll also change this to sign in just for consistency. And we save that file. If we look at git status, you see there's one file modified, the one we've just changed. I'll commit this change using the message changing button text. And then we'll just git push. Now this pushes the code into the GitHub repo we created a few minutes ago. So those changes have now been saved to GitHub. But what you'll notice in the Amplify console is it's automatically started a new deployment because it has a hook into the GitHub repo and it realizes the code has changed. There's nothing you need to do to make this happen. So I'll just fast forward a little bit and you'll see now that the application has now been deployed. And if we open up the URL again, I click allow, you'll see the word now is sign in. So we've actually got now got a new version of the repo uh, in production. So all you have to do with this is to make changes and push them to your repo and Amplify Console will do the rest and synchronize the code for you. So over in Amplify Console, if you want to change the domain, right now we have this generic domain, you can add a domain of your choice. So I'm gonna just add a subdomain that I own from one of my accounts just use ask.jbez.dev and then click on configure domain. Now, normally if you're using a www type domain, you'd have two different subdomains here, but I'm using a subdomain, so I'll just remove this. And I'll uncheck the option to set up a redirect as well because we are using a subdomain. And then click save. In the background, what happens is this will set up all of your SSL and TLS for you. And if you have any sort of domain host with Route 53, all of, all of this is fairly automatic. So I'm going to go to have a look at Route 53 settings. We'll open those. I have various hosted zones. I'll just add a new one for ass.jbez.dev. And we'll create this hosted zone. This gives you some name server settings. Now you need to copy those into wherever your domain is hosted automatically if it's with another provider. If it's all hosted at AWS, this is automatic. Once you've pasted those settings in and you've allowed several hours for them to propagate through the DNS, what you'll see in Amplify Console is that this process will complete and then your application will be served at your new custom domain. All of these certificates will be renewed for you automatically in the future as well. So it's really that simple to create a production website with a custom domain using your own code, using automation provided by Amplify Console. The final thing to remember is in Auth0 to paste in that custom domain, because again, it needs to be in the list of allowed. So I'll just use commas to separate these domains. I'll add them to all four of those settings and then click on save. And then when that domain becomes available, Auth0 will then support that just as it would with the previous domains. In this video, I showed how deploying web applications is easy with AWS Amplify. I also looked at how you modify the Auth0 configuration when working with multiple URLs and production sites. Thanks for joining me for this brief introduction. To learn more about the Ask Around Me web application, visit the GitHub repo shown on the screen. I hope to see you next time. Happy coding!